Thanks for watching and today I want to do something really really cool and before that let me tell you a story. So I didn't go to high school in the US and I remember once I came to the US I was opening this math book on conic sections and it just looked like the worst thing ever. All those formulas everywhere, you know, and I didn't know where they came from, you know, they just magically appeared. And I was like, no way I'm gonna memorize that. Okay, so I didn't memorize this. And then I took linear algebra, and now I'm like, I'm so happy I didn't memorize this because you don't have to. Using linear algebra, you can cl easily classify any conic section you find. So in fact, let me illustrate this. So what is, is you know, the, the curve or the surface, 2x squared plus 10xy plus 2y squared equals to 1. And again, apparently there's some formula of like b squared minus 4ac or something that tells you exactly what this is, but we will do this, as I said, the linear algebra way. And the advantage is, what I'm presenting now, it works for any dimensions. Even for 3D surfaces, we can easily, easily classify them. And also, one little remark, you can also do this with, you know, plus 2x or plus 3y, and it's just the same thing off to a shift. You would then just have to complete the square or something. All right, but now let's keep it simple. What is this thing here? And the problem is, it's this cross term, which actually determines what this is. And just one little thing, I wanna use vectors x and y, so let's just rewrite them in terms of x. So 2x1 squared plus 10x1 x2 plus 2x2 squared equals to one. And let's focus on the left-hand side, which is called a quadratic form. Okay. And the nice thing is in linear algebra, you can actually write quadratic forms in terms of matrices. So let A be the following matrix. And the way you have to read this is x1, x2, x1, x2. So in the first term, you put the x1 squared term, which is two. In the last term, you put uh, uh, the x2, two, uh, x2 squared term, which is 2. Another question is, here you put the x1, x2 term and x2, x1 term, which are the same, but because you want everything to balance out, the way you do this, you distribute them equally in the two slots. So it's 2, 5, 5, 2. The linear algebra reason of this is you want a symmetric matrix because we'll see that for symmetric matrices, this becomes, you, know, you can do more things to symmetric matrices than you can for regular matrices. Okay, so let A be this matrix. And why is that useful? The question is, what is X transpose AX? Where X is just a vector X1, X2. Well, if you calculate this, you know, x1, x2, 2, 5, 5, 2, sorry, this way, column, the row vector, so x1, x2, 2, 5, 5, 2, x1, x2. If you actually calculate the whole thing, turns out you get the original quadratic form back. So 2x1 squared plus 10x1 x2 plus 2x2 squared. So it turns out then this equation you can conveniently write in terms of a. So this just becomes x transpose ax equals to 1. Okay, very good. And Problem is, you know, all we did is show some, you know, aesthetic change. We did some plastic surgery. We haven't really solved the problem at all. But now here comes, you know, where we solve the problem. And for this, we have to use the fact that A is symmetric. 
The nice thing is there's something called the spectral theorem that says any symmetric matrix, we can actually diagonalize them. And not only that, we can super diagonalize them. What's called orthogonally diagonalize. So let's do that. So first of all, diagonalize A. A is PDP inverse. Turns out the eigenvalues are just 7 and minus 3, which already tells you what A is, by the way. We'll get to that later. And P, I got 1, 1, minus 1, 1. But that works for any diagonalizable matrix. It turns out for symmetric matrices, you can do more than that. Namely, you can orthogonally diagonalize this. And I'll tell you in a second what this means. So orthogonally diagonalize. So this actually was useless. So orthogonally diagonalize A. So not only can you write A as PDP inverse, we can actually write A as PDP transpose. So for orthogonal diagonalization, it's easy to calculate P inverse. It's just P transpose. And not only that, it's essential here. And how do you do this? It's actually not that bad. First, you find the eigenvalues. And then you find the eigenvectors. And all you have to do on each eigenspace you use the Gram-Schmidt process. Which here it's easy because we have just two little eigenspaces here and all you do is just you divide each vector by its length. So in fact P becomes 1 1 divided by the length of 1 1 which is 1 over square root of 2 1 over square root of 2 minus 1 over square root of 2 and 1 over square root of 2. Why was that so useful? Let me tell you now why. Because we have x transpose ax. Remember, that was our essential quadratic form. Now we have a is PD P, PDP transpose. A PDP transpose x. And it turns out you can write this in terms of a new quadratic form. Because x transpose p, it's the same thing as p transpose x. And that's because if you take transpose, you switch the terms. So you get x transpose, p transpose, transpose, which is p. And yes, it's pi antibrisian, of course. And then d, and then just p transpose x. So here is a cool thing. If we actually let y, to be P transpose X, then this becomes Y transpose DY. In other words, you took the complicated quadratic form AX transpose AX and turned it into a new quadratic form, X transpose D, Y transpose DY, which I'll show you in a second is much, much easier. So just to summarize, So if you let y is p transpose x, so in other words, if y is y1, y2, and that's the same thing as 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2, minus 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2, of x1, x2. In other words, if y y1 is 1 over square root of 2 x1 plus 1 over square root of 2 x2 and y2 is minus 1 over square root of 2 x1 plus 1 over square root of 2 x2 and this is, those are what are called principal axes so I'm just illustrating the principal axis theorem 
So in other words, if you're in this new coordinate system, and maybe let me draw this. So this is, uh, if you want, 1, 1, or I guess 1 over square root of 2. 1 over square root of 2. And the other one, it's minus 1 over square root of 2. 1 over square root of 2. So suppose you have this new axis. Then our quadratic form, then again, we have our original thing, 2x1 squared plus 10x1 x2 plus 2x2 squared. Again, all thing is equal to 1, but that's the same thing as x transpose ax, which is y transpose dy, which is, if you want, y1, y2. 7, 0, 0 minus 3, y1, y2. In this new coordinate system, y1 and y2, our quadratic form, or our equation, just becomes 7, y1 squared minus 3, y2 squared equals to 1. So, in other words, if you change your thing to y1 and y2, so if your new axes become y1 and y2, or your original one were here, x1, x2, then in fact, our quadratic form just becomes a hyperbola, which looks like this. I'll tell you in a second how I found the axes. In other words, going back to our original question, how do we find what is the surface to what is the curve 2x squared plus 10xy plus 2y squared equals to 1? Well, in those new coordinates y1 and y2, it just becomes a hyperbola. And the question is, how did I choose the branches? Why did I make it go this way and not this way? Well, all I did, I just plugged in x equals to 0. And if x equals to 0, then we get 2y squared equals to 1, so y is plus or minus 1 over square root of 2. So it has to be here. Otherwise, I think you would have found no solutions or something. So it goes to those two points. And as I said, you can do it with any quadratic form. That is a really, really cool thing. So even in higher dimensions or anything. So with linear algebra, you don't have to memorize anything anymore, basically. So. If you didn't memorize the conic sections, I'm glad you did. Now we have this systematic linear algebra way of doing this. All right, so if you like this linear algebra extravaganza and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.